Ladies and gentlemen, please draw your attention to the video screens. Yeshiva University represents the kinds of thinkers and dreamers who have always believed in embracing history and its opportunities, now more than ever before. It is time to think bigger, to think beyond our individual selves, to move history forward, to spread positive values to the world, and to fight for peace and prosperity for all of humanity and with all of humanity. The world has changed greatly. But our task of educating the next generation of students and future leaders has not changed. It has just shifted to be in sync with our new realities. Today, perhaps more than ever before, there's a need to raise generations of students who are both deeply rooted and forward focused. We live in a rapidly changing world. Technology, medicine, education, and communications are progressing and shifting in fundamental ways. This presents daunting challenges, but also extraordinary opportunities for humanity. Armed with the 3,000-year-old tradition of wisdom, Yeshiva University's mission is to guide our students in broader society in seizing these opportunities and transforming our world of tomorrow for the better. We will dedicate ourselves to empowering morally mature, market-ready graduates with the skill sets for lifelong success endowing them both with the will and the wherewithal to make a historic, significant impact on an ever-changing world. This is the future for Yeshiva University. Ladies and gentlemen, we now present Why You Changemakers, a multimedia presentation showcasing our remarkable students and faculty partnering to change the world for the better. Please welcome the director of the Mechina Pathways Basic Jewish Studies Program and Bible professor at the Stern College for Women, Professor Shoshana Schechter. Good evening, everyone. My name is Shoshana Schechter, and I'm a proud, proud Stern graduate a parent of two current Yeshiva University students, plus a high school student. I'm a professor of Bible at Stern College and director of the Machina program, which is geared towards students who are coming from unaffiliated and non-formal Jewish educational backgrounds looking to strengthen their Jewish identities. When I was a student 25 years ago, my friends and I would travel all over the world running programs to help Jews connect to their Judaism while there were students down the hall from our own dorm rooms looking for that very thing. At that time, there was no structured program at Stern geared towards those students. The Machina program, which I created and now direct, changed all that. Allow me to tell you a little bit about my students. Rachel, from Sussex County, New Jersey, grew up Catholic and was in middle school when she started looking for ways to connect to God. Marjorie from Brazil grew up in Sao Paulo and went to a Jewish school but had no knowledge of Torah Judaism. Whitney from Portland, Oregon was an unaffiliated Jewish woman who attended public schools and became connected to NCSY during her high school years. All of these students from such different backgrounds, geographically, ideologically, and culturally, ended up in my Machina program. And they were not the only ones. They were joined by other students from all across the United States, from Europe, Israel, South America, the former Soviet Union, Canada, Australia, South Africa, and even Tahiti. Four years later, when they graduate from Yeshiva University with a strong Jewish identity and strong Jewish values, they know that their mission is to use their YU education to better the world around them. I am here tonight to introduce a very special Machina student, Shani Chava, an inspired 
and inspiring young woman who I have had the pleasure and honor of having had as a student for the past four years. Shani is from Israel. She grew up in Petach Tikva and started playing tennis 15 years ago at the age of 10. She started competing in national and international tournaments and became one of the top seeded tennis players in the country. By age 17, she was coaching tennis and playing as well as managing a successful Israeli tennis club with her twin sister. After serving her country in the Israeli Defense Forces, Shani began researching U.S. colleges, hoping to enroll as a tennis recruit. While she was offered scholarships in some Division II colleges, Shani chose to enroll at Yeshiva University, a Division III college, because she wanted to be in a Jewish environment where she could openly and easily celebrate Jewish holidays and study at a strong business school. Having such deep passion for her country and being an army veteran, a pro-Israel campus was a must. Unfortunately, pro-Israel campuses are difficult to come by these days. And YU, as we all know, is the greatest one. When Shani... <laughs> when Shani chose YU, her family and her friends were skeptical, as was she because it was a yeshiva, and their perceptions of yeshivas in Israel were not always so positive, and they were afraid a little bit of religious coercion. Shani is the first to admit that her perception of religious Judaism changed dramatically at Yeshiva University. Here she found the environment to be open and accepting and completely non-judgmental, thereby allowing her to take ownership of her Judaism and her connection to Torah for the first time in her life. With a double major in accounting and business intelligence and marketing analysis, along with a minor in finance and a perfect GPA, Shani has been named the top student athlete for the past four years. Under her leadership, the tennis team became exponentially stronger and this year, for the first time in the history of Stern College for Women, the tennis team won their conference championship and are heading to the national NCAA championships in May. Shani is even featured in the current issue of Sports Illustrated magazine as a young athlete of distinction. When she graduates this coming May, with top honors and a sterling academic record, Shani is not just leaving Stern with a market-ready business degree and numerous tennis trophies, but with stronger Jewish values, stronger connection to her Jewish heritage, and a powerful desire to use everything that she gained at Yeshiva University to impact the world and to make a difference. And all of this is only possible because of the support of philanthropists. Like Mary Schwartz, who we are honored to have here with us tonight, and all of you. We can't do it without you. Thank you, Mary, for helping create a generation of change makers, and thank you everybody who's here. It is my absolute pleasure and joy to introduce to you Shani Chava. Thank you. It's a, it, it is a tremendous honor to be here tonight and have the opportunity to share my gratitude with all of you. Attending Yeshiva University has been a life-changing experience and I could not have done it without your help. When I came to Yeshiva University three and a half years ago, I came by myself. I left my family in Israel and I've spent my time in YU creating another different family. That family started with YU Athletics, with Joel Bednarsh, the head of the YU Athletics Department, and the rest of the athletic staff, whose recruitment was the reason that I came here. 
with Naomi Katsowitz, my coach, and with the four tennis teams that I've been a part of. Their constant support has made my time in YU some of the best years of my life. I knew I would find a family in athletics, but I never expected to find such a warm and caring family in the Machina program. The environment created by the teachers and the students helped me grow and develop academically and religiously. The teachers, Mrs. Schechter and Rabbi Hadjioff, have become like second parents to me, helping me with everything and anything I needed. They always go above and beyond for me, like coming to my tennis matches, which is one of the most special memories I have of playing tennis in YU. Of all my experiences in YU, one that stands out the most is my team's historic victory in the Skyline Conference Championships this season. This victory earned us the first NCAA tournament bid of any women's athletics program in history. After three years of hard work and three consecutive defeats in the semifinals, it was incredible to finally lift that trophy, and it was a tremendous honor to be named the most valuable player of the tournament. Thank you. I would not have been able to take part in and grow from any of these experiences without the help of you, of people who had never met me and yet chose to believe in me. I might seem unique, but I'm not. There are many other students like me who have gained so much from coming to YU, and it's all because of your generosity. The impact that YU has made of me will stay with me for the rest of my life, and I hope that it will help me continue your influence by giving back in turn to the YU community and the world. Thank you for everything you've done for me and for so many others. Tadaraba. Achieving our historic victory was a team effort, and I'm tremendously proud to be a part of that team who is here tonight. <laughs> now, I want to share the pride and accomplishment with all of you. first time in certain history that we made it to the championships and that we won the championships. One, two, three, best! <laughs> I've been playing tennis since I was five years old. Ever since then, I wanted to play competitively, and this is my first chance. My sister and brother were also on the team, so it runs in the family. We all had great experiences here. I mean, it's been a w winning season. I chose the right year. We've won every single game, every single conference match. And each one of them has taken the ownership of the team, and I think that that's been um, a key factor in our success. A lot of people told me I might not be able to do school and tennis, and I'm happy I did, because I now feel part of a family. I think you feel a sense of community in Stern, walking around with the YU max across your chest while you play. You really feel some pride in your school and representing the Jewish community. The dual curriculum um, plays a large role in the student athletes' um, diligence and their motivation. They're used to hard work, they're used to juggling. It's geared towards us and we're able to represent YU in the greatest light. It's very fun to be able to come out and have good team sportsmanship and be able to come home with a win. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Clinical Assistant Professor of Law, Director of the Indy Film Clinic, Director of the Leadership Program at the Heyman Center of Corporate Governance at Benjamin N. Cordoza School of Law, Michelle greenberg Cobrin. It's a lot of titles. Um, a number of weeks ago, a student of mine asked me if he could miss the last half hour of class. Um, I wasn't particularly surprised by the professionalism of this student, 
But when I asked why, he was uncharacteristically cagey for an otherwise thoughtful and terrific student. Um, I pressed further, and he told me that he had to miss class because he had to go home and change for a dinner. Okay, that's not such a good reason to miss class. So I pressed a little bit further. After all, I'm a lawyer, I'm a teach negotiations, I'm a parent, and I asked him why it was so important to go to the dinner. So he told me it was the Clio Awards, the awards which recognize excellence in, um, in advertising and communication, which is cool, but still not a good enough reason to miss class. After a little more, after a little more conversation, he finally told me that the reason he was going to the Clio Awards was because he had won a Clio Award. And um, I told him that was a good enough reason to miss class. Um, the reason he was cagey was because, like many of my students, he was remarkably humble about this wonderful achievement and his remarkable talents. Um, so I told him he could miss only if he showed the commercial to the class. So he did. The commercial, which you'll see in a few minutes, is a public service announcement that aims to get people to stop texting and driving. And Alejandro Palma composed a song that's made up of the words people were texting at the moment in which they died. Um, the students were, uh, found the whole, uh, the whole commercial rem remarkable and the music even more so. Um, I would say that they took away two things from watching, from watching that commercial, the rest of my class. Um, one thing um, was that they noticed Alejandro had opened for John Legend at South by Southwest. This is probably not meaningful to some of you in the audience, but trust me, it's awesome. Um, they, they also realized that you need a darn good reason to miss class, so mission accomplished. Um, I'm delighted to be here tonight, and I just wanted to take a minute and congratulate the honorees, Rob Goldveh, David Sampson, and Brett Stevens on your remarkable honors. Um, I came to Cardozo from Columbia Law School just about a year ago now. Um, I was recruited by Dean Melanie Leslie to grow the newly established independent film clinic and to found a center on leadership through the Heyman Center for Corporate Governance. Um, I was amazed at the model of this clinic. Um, we represent journalists and documentary and narrative filmmakers who are seeking to use the visual arts to move the social justice needle in some way. Um, we know, we all know, that in today's world, visual media is increasingly the way information is consumed and information is shared. Even traditional print media outlets, such as the New York Times and the Washington Post, have more and more video journalism on their sites. Um, however, in today's increasingly complicated world, journalists and documentary filmmakers are under attack in all sorts of ways. And while it's not incredibly expensive or complicated anymore to make a video, uh, or to make a film, or to engage in documentary filmmaking, um, getting it released is incredibly complicated, where ownership of intellectual property, the need to think about negotiations and contract drafting, questions about fundraising from investors, all of these require the help of a good, of a good lawyer. What I find is that my students are doing some of the most interesting legal work, working at the highest levels, working at the cusp of innovative lawyering as they grapple with new problems, think about how our new clients are, and try to think about how to serve well new technologies and new problems. Alejandro utilized his talents to solve a modern problem, texting and driving, caused by technology. He was and is a change maker, utilizing his talents and new frameworks to move the ball forward. I'll, I'll note that along the way, though, he did not forget to bring his mom, and I just want to welcome Ms. Palma, who came from Texas, to join us here tonight. Um, so, so while I'll note that Alejandro is a, is a uh, very, quite, very special Cardozo student, he is not a unique Cardozo student. Um, every day, 
students in my clinic are creating change. They're bringing stories to market on all sorts of important issues, whether those issues are questions of immigration, racial and gender equality, Holocaust education, voting rights, the schools to prison pipeline, they are bringing those stories forward. And in my leadership program, both students and lawyers are thinking about what it means to be change makers in the for-profit, in the non-for-profit, and in the government arenas. We're working to bring more women into leadership in the legal profession, on corporate boards, and in philanthropy. Um, and I'll say that with all of this, my corner of Cardozo, my corner of Cardozo is not the only is not the only place where this is going on. Um, when we think about what our mission should be, the Navi tells us again and again that societies are judged not based on ritual performance. Right? So Yeshayahu tells us, "Lama li rov I don't need your ritual performance. What the prophetic vision repeats again and again is the importance of protecting the yatom and the almana, the widow and the orphan, those in society who are most vulnerable and most defenseless. And the mission today more important than ever, and I would say in the area of law more important than ever, is doing the work of protecting those who are most vulnerable and most without defense in our society. At Cardozo, I was amazed to find, under Dean Leslie's leadership, how faculty and students are working together in every pocket of the law school to engage in this critical mission. Whether it's the Immigration Justice Project or the Innocence Project or the Civil Rights Clinic or the Blockchain Project or my own clinic, Students are working together with faculty to figure out who out there needs help and to bring to bear free legal services. Um, what, what I find is that Cardozo students are really working sure to make sure that each individual's humanity and the essential humanity and civility of our society are protected. And that is really the Torah and Met, the essential eternal Jewish value of what we are trying to accomplish here at Yeshiva University. Um, and I would say through this, through this giving to others, students recognize the intense power and the intense responsibility that comes with holding a law degree. They emerge from their time at Cardozo with the ability to hit the ground running my students have grappled with the most complex intellectual property and transactional and deal issues. They're negotiators, they're contract drafters, they're deal makers. They're really able to see the big problems and to solve them in a thoughtful and constructive way and move the ball forward. Um, and Cardozo, which has top rank both intellectual property and clinical programs, really attracts students who are both quite talented but also driven to use that talent together with the rule of law to change society. When um, students introduce themselves at the beginning of the class, they all talk about, you know, I ask them to all say what they've done, and they talk about their remarkable accomplishments, often in humble ways, as with Alejandro. Um, and while I'm blown away by the talents in the room, what makes them more remarkable as with Alejandro, is their commitment to using that talent to change the world for good. So, I'm gonna ask you to turn your attention to the video now, and I challenge each one of you, after having seen it, to not be changed just a teeny bit, as I am every day at Cardozo. Thank you. Put It Down is a song that took the lives of those who wrote it. We partnered with Ali J to help compose a song. The lyrics are a compilation of fatal text messages that were being written at the exact moment of the crash. Sounds good, my man, I'll see you soon.
posted on SoundCloud, where people could follow the text messages in real time and learn more about the stories of the victims. We found a way to disguise a three-minute ad as an emerging song, which was played on major radio stations, persuading drivers not to text and drive at the exact moment they exhibit this behavior. The lyrics to this song came from nine fatal text messages that were being written at the exact moment of the crash. Since its release, Put It Down has been inspiring more drivers to put their phone down. Ladies and gentlemen, award-winning composer and current student at Cardozo's Law School, Alejandro Palma. Thank you so much, so much. Um, first, thank you guys for having me here. It's an incredible honor to be able to join the ceremony and especially to be honored and um, to be recognized for the work. Um, I'm just gonna speak briefly about my incredible experience at Cardozo. Uh, I come from a music background, clearly, and I studied music in undergrad, and I was kind of grappling with how to continue on that business, and um, I got, I started to learn more about the business and the legal side of music, which most people will tell you is about 95% of it. Um, and I came across Cardozo just doing internet research on schools that support this kind of um, niche market, which is entertainment and everything that's media and music related. And Cardozo came up and um, I came to visit and everybody was very supportive. And one of the, one of the things that really attracted me to the school was the, how the community-based it was. And um, as my professor stated, uh, this, the school is full of students with completely unique backgrounds, completely unique stories. Everybody's trying to do something different and something good. And that really attracted me. And so I um, came here and I've been awarded a, a huge plethora of opportunities with just the career advisors that I've had. Dean Leslie has been incredible in supporting everything that I do. And um, I've had the opportunity to work at record labels uh, like Sony. Um, I, worked in, uh, I worked at NBC this past summer um, in their media department doing you know, just legal work that also involve, helps me bridge the two worlds together. And um, I'm also part of the Indie Film Clinic uh, which we, we like to take on works that push the social needle. And so I think that the, the Clio Award came at a perfect time, uh, very unexpected, um, but it, was, it came at a perfect time because it was right when I was in the clinic and kind of really delving into what it meant to use uh, a, another talent, which we see with our clients all the time in film, to push the social needle and to bring people to, to a certain problem. And uh, maybe in New York, it doesn't affect us as much texting and driving because you can text on the subway. But um, uh, I grew up in Texas, and I have, you know, all my friends are, are guilty of it, and I'm guilty of it. My parents are guilty of it. We all, we all think we can sneak in, you know, one more text before the light turns green or whatever. And um, working on this project, uh, which takes, uh, you know, the literal words that people were typing as, as they crashed really makes you think twice about, you know, what you're gonna, what you're gonna say, and when you're gonna say it, um, especially behind the wheel. But on a less morose subject, um, Cardozo has been incredible. They've awarded me an incredible amount of opportunities to practice what I want to do. Every time that I say, you know, that I come from a music background, but I'm studying law, everyone's like, "Oh, that's a little strange, isn't it?" And, but when I come to Cardozo, I feel right at home, and uh, they support everything that I do. And um, they've already given me a leg up in in the not only in the entertainment world, but in the entertainment and legal world and so I just want to say thank you one more time uh, for honoring me and uh, I had a great time. Please welcome to the stage Jesse Silverman, Yeshiva College student, class of 2018. Good evening. 
from leading an international team of scholars to Rome in 2012 to an undergraduate seminar in Rome as a part of the J. and Jeannie Schottenstein Honors Program to the Arch of Titus exhibition in the Yeshiva University Museum in the heart of New York City. Yeshiva University faculty and students have made a major contribution to the, to the body of world knowledge. The video you are about to see tells that story. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage YU's president, Rabbi Dr. Ari Berman. Okay, it's my pleasure to close this evening's program. You have just all seen a glimpse of Yeshiva University's present. We are on the march forward in a great journey to build and launch an incredible future. This is the time to join us in our journey. We look forward to your participation and your partnership as we launch together to bring Yeshiva University to great new heights, moving history forward and, and creating a greater Jewish community and helping create a better world of tomorrow for all of humanity. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. <laughs>